Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and we are on air. I appreciate everybody coming back and everybody watching. Uh, we did the truck yesterday. We got both the stacks put on the back. We didn't put a bunk, so it's not a big rig. It's just a truck, <laughs> but that's okay. What's going on today is we're going to play on the Bugatti. Uh, we have a shop going up. I think I explained that yesterday. We have a shop going up. Um, we have a certain date and time that we think it's going to be done. And uh, we're going to have a place to put the Bugatti. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is... Don't tell everybody. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> I'm going to finish it. I'm going to try to finish it. I'm going to dig down deep and do all the little tiny things that I have to do to get it done. And there's a bunch of small stuff that I have to do to get it done. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. And this car, generally, when you build a car, you, you build the car, you tear it apart, you paint it, and you put it back together. Um, what I have done is I have built the car, I have painted some pieces, and I am still figuring it out as I'm going. So that's how I try to get ahead a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't work out the greatest that way, but I am doing it that way. Um, this car was built for Jolene. Uh, when I first met Jolene, Jolene uh, was so beautiful that... I wanted her to come my way, and uh, I want her to enjoy old cars just as much as I do. And uh, what I asked her to do is pick a car that she would like to have built for herself. And um, basically, she come back with, I'd like to have a Bugatti. Um, it surprised me um, because I was trying to point her towards the Delahaye sort of thing. Um, but she come back with this car, and I was very happy that she come back with this car because I thought or I knew that I could build it for. Um, well, I had fun watching uh, the show called The Guild or something like that, The Guild or Automotive Restorations. Um, they built a, a Bugatti on there. I'm not sure how many years and how many millions of dollars it took. Does not matter. But the story was very interesting of the Bugatti family. Uh, me and Jolene is, has even went to uh, California and we've seen a real Bugatti in the Peterson Museum. We've also gone to, uh, what's the guy's name? Peter Mullins. Peter Mullins Museum. I should remember that name. We went to his museum. I think he's one of the biggest uh, collector of French cars, probably known. Uh, but we got to see them. Um, so this is a car that I've built for Jolene, and uh, they're very, they're different. Um, I know why, I know why um, they cost so much to work on and so much to build, and it's because of how everything is piled into a small little package. Um, if, yeah, basically I know that. Um, everything is so tight, as you can see this car, where it's so, where it's so, small like this to get the engine in to get the um, the front suspension in to get the back suspension in to be able to sit in it um, everything is very 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 tight um, so what is going on today is I'm going to put on the fender skirts uh, I don't know if, yeah put on the fender skirts and Jolene's going to help me uh, these fender skirts on this car you would never get a flat tire and then pull the fender skirt off and have a little little uh, uh, lever to pull and the fender skirt fall off. No, it's not like that. You'd have to get it somewhere or, or get it up in the air and get the fender skirt off. And uh, that's what kind of car it is. It's not a kind of car where it's an everyday driver. I think these cars were known to be the fastest car in the world at the time. And they still are maybe the fastest car in the world. And you, like, like I said, um, to work on a brand new one, um, I'm thinking that you have to do so much to it to work on it. Like everything is just in there so tight. Um, you Like for this car instance, to work on the engine of this car, and we had an engine go bad on us, uh, probably don't want to go there. But the, but the real truth of the matter is, if the engine goes bad in this car, what it means is, is that the body's got to come off so if you, if you want to think about it, if the body's got to come off, the steering's got to be unhooked, the brake's got to be unhooked, um, there's many things, the wiring's got to be unhooked, all the body mount's got to come off. If there's anything hooked to the car that's going hooked to the chassis, that has to come off to, in order to fix the engine. Uh, you are not going to fix the engine in this car while it's in the car. That's not, not going to happen. So that's probably why it's, it's such an expensive car to have or to build is because certain things have to be done in order to work on it. Um, 
even, what can I say, uh, even the gas tank or anything that goes wrong with the gas tank or anything like that where the, where the gas tank is in behind the back seats, um, you'd have to pull your interior out and, and mess with everything to even just get at the gas tank um, to mess with what's going on. The car basically has to be torn apart to be worked on and it's not because of it's because of the way it's built. It's such a small package with the most horsepower or the biggest engine you can get into it um, fit in a small package, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove the, the fender skirts back. I know I'm just blabbling, but it is what it is. I'm going to put the fender skirts back on it in the back. Um, we're going to just stick the doors back on it just to sort of get everything out of the way. It's been sitting over here in the side of the shop here for quite a long time. We just want to put that on. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over to the chassis and I'm going to put the rack and pinion on the chassis. Uh, Jolene's going to have to help me maybe put the, the fender skirts on. Uh, she's going to put the camera down. She's got a nice pair of Daisy Dukes on today and a halter top, so it should be a good video. <laughs> Jolene looks amazing today. Uh, I got the fender skirt sitting here, the door sitting here. I got the inner fender sitting here. And basically I want to get them up off the ground get them out of the way, get them on the car, and, and start playing with the car again. Uh, on these fender skirts, uh, I made these fender skirts, I did a video doing that, I did them out of round rod, I got a bracket made here, a bracket here, a bracket over there, there's three bolts, and then I got it pinned. Um, basically that's how I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to set this down, I'm going to set this back on, and basically I'm going to try to work on this car until it's done. Uh, I, have, I have some brackets to make for the seats. The seats are just sitting in there. I have to make a steel construction for the seat. If Jolene wants to come over and get down with me. Um, you can see the floor in this car is a square, a square stock uh, with panels that I made. I have to go inside the tunnel and finish off welding that up in the tunnel because I could not do it where it was at before. That's why I took it off. And basically what I have to do is I have to make uh, square stuff from here to there and there to there maybe uh, to bolt the seat in. I have to have a construction there. I don't want to just bolt the seat to the floor pan itself, piece of 18 gauge. I want to bolt it to a metal construction so I'm going to have to get in there and make that. Uh, we're going to have to get uh, the seats we got the door, the door cards made. They're off for interior right now. When we get, the, when we get that done, we get the, the bolt the seats in. Then we can get send the seats away and get them done. Uh, we're going to be uh, knocking on Floyd Hiltz's door, and uh, we'll get some, some of the interior going. Uh, we already got the wood done for it. You can go check that out on video. Jeff Webster did the wood on it. The wood's fabulous. Um, we're hoping that the interior is going to be fabulous, which I'm pretty sure it will be. Um, Basically, I'm just going to jump into it and try to finish it. If we get to a place where we do not think that it's, you know, good car content, um, I have a truck out there to play with. But basically, we're going to try to get this Bugatti done and stick with it and get it done. Maybe put some paint on things. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to try to put this fender skirt on myself or maybe get Jolene to help me. I'm not sure. I'm going to ratchet over here. So it's nice to look at it again and get it out. I blew the, I got it out and blew all the dust off it. Wow, it was some dirty. What a baby. It was dirty. It was dirty, Gertie. Uh, I'm just going to get in here. So there's three tabs on this fender skirt. It, this fender skirt is made at a round rod. Uh, the fender skirt was made after the car was made. Uh, I kind of wish that the fender skirt was made um, while the car was being made, but Jolene made the decision after I had the car filled out that she wanted fender skirts. It did not matter. She's my queen, so I did exactly what she wanted. And that's a good thing to do. Do exactly what they want. Um, basically, I've got a bowl here, a bowl here, a bolt up front, and a pin there. So basically, I'm just going to pin it first. And it might not fit exactly perfect at first, but it should fit pretty good. It should fit pretty good once I get it in place. So I gotta go up there. We'll just put a nut on it. Probably the best video yet. You can't see me. Huh? Baby? Best video yet. You can't see him.
So you could, this would not be something that you would just take off. You come to a service station, we had a flat tire, and this, this fender skirt is not going to be the one that you just pull off and be over and be done with it and flick a lever. That's not going to happen. Um, this is Bugatti. This is one of the most expensive cars in the world. It's going to take you a little bit of time to get done what you need to get done. And I guess maybe that's why it's expensive. Other than it's probably the fastest car in the world. I'm not sure if ours is going to be the fastest car in the world or not, but it's going to look some fast. And there's some fine tune adjustment. I might not have it looking the best it's supposed to look right at the present second, but um, I'm just setting it on for now. Nope, that's not the setting I want. That's good. That good. That's good. I don't know what that looks like, but I've got it set on there right now. Yeah, see, we have to deal with a little bit of gap going on there. It's a little bigger there, a little shy there. Um, basically, that's what's going on. Just setting it on, going back for it, see what it looks like. I might as well do the other one on right now while I'm, while I'm here. And the fender skirt was an afterthought. That's what it was, it was, it was an afterthought. So I'm just sticking them back on to get everything out of the way. I will be taking them off and on, obviously, off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. That's the way you build a car, off and on, off and on. The better they fit, the better they work, um, the better job you have done. Are you happy every piece I put on, sweetheart? Yep. All right. Got three bolts here. This fender skirt on this side I took, I made the fender skirt, wasn't really paying attention. When I put the car together, the fender skirts um, looked really nice on both sides. But when I got looking at the fender skirts, one fender skirt was a little different shape than the other one. So I went back into this side and I repaired it. Uh, and I made it look exactly the same as the other side. And it took me a little bit. Yes, it did. I cannot lie. But I had to do it to make myself happy. Um, I didn't like the other one fender skirt was a little thinner down around the back side. And I repaired it and made it look exactly the same. I have to go easy because I'm working on a Bugatti. <laughs> so we're going to try to finish this car. Uh, and and finish, to finish something, it's, it's, it's a little slower work than making something in my brain. All right. I'm putting that thing on there, so that isn't going to fit, is it? But it does. Lying right there. Just take me a second. And we wanted all the, the pins to be hidden, so that's why I'm up, I'm up inside. When the car, uh, what can I say? If the car had a flat tire, you'd have to take your time, like I said before, and get them taken off. But they're very accessible. I think they're accessible. I'm not sure if I got that on there. Maybe I should take and take a look at it first because there probably will be a uh, there probably will be a sequence of which way they look best on there. Uh, 
Not bad. We'll just leave it like that. Just looking at the fitment. Cool. Haven't seen it with the fender skirts on for a while. You'll have to forgive me. Just slowing down here a little bit. And basically I'm just putting stuff on to get it out of the way. The doors have not been on for a dog's age. And I'm just gonna set them on. Is that not? I'm just going to stick it in through one of the holes here. sitting down in there there click your door on we had nice gaps on the door when we first took it off and we really have nice gaps still now beautiful also I've never put them on when I finished around the, doing the bodywork around the hinges so I do not I did not know if they fit good but now I know now I know I would just pound them back in, obviously. They're not, that's not going anywhere. Awesome. Uh, first time we've seen the doors and the fender skirts on it in a long time. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Mm -hmm. Jolene has, has to order a window for it. Um, we have welded it. We have welded it. There's weld marks on it. There's grinder marks. There's everything. She's going to order a new window for it. So it really looks sharp. Uh, we would never want to use that one. We have inner fenders that I've never even put in yet. Uh, haven't even put them on yet. I've got them uh, stepped, stepped out. Uh, you can see where they're stepped out a little bit and then I put louvers in them. Have not even primed them, done anything with them. So basically, um, yeah, there's a lot of work left to do, but we're gonna go for it. It's time. She likes that when I say that. Just gonna set that in there. The doors, I think I pretty well had done. I'm gonna to have to slow down a little bit and go over things that I think I've had done or I haven't had done. And uh, basically, that's what's gonna happen. So put that pin in there. Yay. Just kind of just putting it through the first hole, just so we can look at that. Them doors really shut nice the first time. We've yeah, it looks good. You can tell the dust that was on it. You must be happy already. Am I done? <laughs> I'm done, boys. I'm done. Uh, basically, I'm just going to take a quick walk around it because I have not seen it with the doors on it or the fender skirts on it for a while. You can tell there's still some fill there to clean up. There's some primer to put on this side, obviously. I've got to do the underneath, but we wanted to get the doors on it and the fender skirts on it. We're going for it. So we're not done yet, not even by a long chance. We're just putting it together so you can see and see what it looks like. I have, what I have is the chassis in here in the paint room. I've got the wheels off. 
And what is going on is, this is a, I think I've explained it before, but we're going to go over it again. This is a 65 Mustang, 64 and a half Mustang front suspension that I've modified to make it work. Uh, I've made my own hats on the top. We've airbagged it. Um, the hats were enclosed. They had a, had a coil going up through there, I'm pretty sure. And I've cut that all out, um, capped it, and made our own uh, top uh, control arm. Our bottom control arm we made ourselves. It was a, it had this control arm and then it had a, uh, I'm not sure what that bar is called, that's going back. I had some, I remember, if I remember right, I had some trouble doing that. I learned um, as I was doing that, I learned what was going on, what I did wrong. Um, it was a good experience. It wasn't so good that everybody was watching me learn, but it does explain to you that you learn by your mistakes. If I, if I didn't make a mistake, I wouldn't be learning anything. But I, ma I made a few mistakes on this, and um, I'm going to go over a couple of mistakes I made because I think if, you know, if I made a mistake and didn't know, there's other people that's made mistakes and didn't know. On the Loctite, I probably shouldn't have been using the red. The red is um, quite vicious. I'm not sure. I don't think the red, it must have went bad because it's not holding on like it said it should. Uh, the red, I think you basically have to heat the bolt back up. I would never want to heat the bolts back up on this to take anything out. Um, I'm thinking you have to be careful on that stuff. I did not realize that the red Loctite was forever. <laughs> um, I think you'd want to use a blue a Loctite. Um, what else did I learn? I learned, uh, I put the bolts on, uh, the bolts on the shocks going this way. From what I understand, um, like on an airplane, they put the bolts going back the other way. So if you're flying this way, all the bolts would be in this way. They wouldn't be going that way. Just something, it does not matter, I don't think, but it's something I learned. Um, I learned a few things on this chassis as I was doing it, and uh, I'm learning all the time, and, uh, and uh, that's the way it is. But what I have going on right now is I've got a Mustang uh, caliper and a four-piston, uh, I got a rotor and a four-piston caliper. Um, these brakes were donated to us by John Wilson. I'm just going over this by my, you know, I'm talking to myself as I'm talking to you. Um, I've got a Jaguar rack and pinion. So this is the Jaguar rack and pinion. Um, if you don't know, you, if, you're watch, if you watch YouTube or if you watch us Facebook, basically I build things out of what I have. That's basically it, what I have. I do not run around all these places and try to find stuff and, and open my pocket up to try to buy stuff. I had the, the, the Jaguar rack and pinion, so I made it work. If you do not know, if you're into building cars or into building whatever, if you have a rack that is in front of your, of your frame that steers in the front and you try to take that rack and put it on the back, your car will steer backwards. If you did not know that, I'm telling you because I've done it. <laughs> um, if you have a rack that belongs on the back and you try to put it on the front, your car will steer backwards. What I mean by steer backwards, you turn this way, the wheels will go that way. If you turn this way, the wheels will go that way. If you ch interchange them. So this rack and pinion is the one I wanted. I did not want a rack up in the front of Jolene's car. I, I didn't want anything that makes it look ugly up in front here. I didn't want nothing in there. I want it behind the front suspension. And that's the rack that I'm using is the Jaguar. It goes in behind everything and uh, it works out nice. Uh, when I painted this chassis, uh, um, there's, a video, there's videos on the whole thing that we paint this chassis. Uh, the rack and pinion, I had to make all the brackets and we used gussets in on the, on the brackets that we made. We weld them all in there. Uh, we didn't grind anything. We just seam sealed them and, and everything turned out awesome, I think. Jolene did a beautiful job filling out the rear end and stuff like that to make it look good. Basically, so right now I want to put on the rack I've had the rack painted for a while. I still got some tape on it. I did not have the tie rod ends themselves, but when I got the tie rod ends, they did not work. That's what I got going on. I can't, I can't, they will not work up to that hole. They will not work. So basically what has to happen is, 
I have to wind that hole out to fit the tie rod in. So what, ha what has happened is, or what I've, what I've done in the past, I have done this in the past, you can buy a, a drill bit that looks like that, looks like a cone, and it's for exactly what I'm doing. I've got a tie rod end, it does not work on the steering arm of the Mustang that I have, and I'm going to drill it out. I'm going to drill this out so I can get that tie rod end up in there so we can put the rack and pinion on. Um, I'm going to jack it up in the front. I'm not going to use jack stands on it. I'm not planning on getting underneath of it or anything. I just want to jack it up so I can get the rack and pinion on. I have my steering knuckle already on. Uh, we did a video on that. We did a video on that. I'm going to take the tape off. I can leave that on there for now. Basically, what I have to do, let's do this. Let's get this going. Welcome back, everybody. Huh? Doing the Bugatti. And this, this, you know, I'm, as we're starting off here, I'm a little bit nervous getting back at it. Um, this is a little, a little bit different than than fabricating and making something. I don't have to worry about scratching anything. I don't have to worry about anything like that. When it comes to work like this, it really is slow and tedious. It really is. Like it, um, it takes time. It takes uh, paying attention. And, and if I do something wrong, it's, it, then it's hard to go back and fix to, you know, I don't want to go back and paint this chassis or anything like that. Um, Basically, what I'm doing right now should have been done before I painted the chassis and going this way. But I'm building the car on the fly, so I have to do this sort of stuff, drill those arms, the steering arms, to make that work, because I did not build the car before I painted the chassis and put it together. So basically, I have built the car, <laughs> and I painted the car before I've built the car. I'm going to get something else to tighten that a little bit because it's going on me. So happy to see the doors on it. Wow. Huh? Here we go, man. We're going to build a Bugatti. Awesome. Back at it. Feels good. Feels good. I have to get underneath that. There's not going to be any videos of me underneath of it welding up what I have to weld up. I think it's kind of nonsense, really. But there's things I have to do to get underneath of it to fix that up. But anything on the suspension, I will show. And if I'm not doing anything to make um, good content, well then we have a truck out there, we have all kinds of stuff. But basically, I am going to stay with the car to get it done, to put in the shop, the new shop. We're just getting a little bit of penetrating. We use Crown here. Crown's been a good supporter of, I'm gonna bring these with me, a good supporter of us with the penetrant. They, it's been good. It's been good. We're gonna have to get the engine rocking and rolling. We got all kinds to do. Just gonna put a little penetrant on the on the bed itself. Now, um, I also have I have sort not yeah I have sort of made the hole too big. I've done that before, where you drill up too far in your arm which doesn't work for this. I have done that before and you have to be careful. But what I'm looking at is the top of that. If you don't know, I'm gonna show you. And if you do know, you already know. Um, these are on sort of a beveled, a beveled edge. So they sort of get, they're smaller up here and bigger down there. So they lock in there really nice and tight, um, basically. And that's why the drill bit is in that shape because these are smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom to lock them in there nice. And from what I see, the top of this piece here is about the t big as the top is that drill bit. When I put the drill bit, I'm gonna jack that up some. So prepare, uh, no, I'm, gonna t I'm talking to myself. I'm preparing myself to make mistakes <laughs> because that's what's going to happen on this one because um, I'm building it on the fly as I go and I don't know everything because I've never built a Bugatti before and all the situations that I'm going to come into are going to be learning situations so I really have to prepare myself to make, make mistakes. I'm going to be making mistakes in front of your very eyes. Um, that's a hard thing to do for some people but I've come to realize at this age I'm at that 
everybody makes mistakes. And uh, I want to show that, you know, that's how you learn. Don't be scared to make mistakes. If you're scared to make mistakes, um, it'll hold you back. And uh, nothing's holding me back. I don't care how many mistakes I make. All right. I've got to try to get that in there. All right, we're in there. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring, bring the drill bit right to the top, and then I'm going to stop. Excuse me, sex to be here. Doug, I haven't forgot about your glasses. I still got them. Just I have to be careful sometimes because it throws metal in my eyes because they're a little bit small. But I use them. Chewing good now. Almost to the top. Gonna take it out, try it. I think it would be a mistake for me not to try it. Nope, not going up through there yet. I'm gonna do this too. I'm gonna oil this drill up a little bit. So if you haven't seen uh, the video with me, us telling you what color is going, uh, it's going colonial white or colonial white, I think it is, like the wheels. It's actually going the color of the wheels. And it's going to have a tan ostrich interior. And it's going to have a caramel uh, carpet, I guess it's going to have. in the eyes.
on, baby. Must be biting good. Getting close. But that thread has to come out through there in order to bolt that on. Stop it. All right. We're biting good, obviously. not annoying or nothing, is it? We'll get her. Slow and steady wins a race sometimes. Stop it. Stop it. Now you understand why I don't like a drill. Beep, beep, beep. That's me swearing. Beep. <laughs> Gee. Stop it. Closer. At least our threads are up through there now. Getting closer. We got lots of it. Yeah. Don't have to take any more.
too far. A little shaking on down there. <laughs> Have to be careful. I don't want to go too far with it. I think it should come up through a little bit tighter, a little bit more. It might haul it up through. I don't think it's going to haul it up through too far. We've got quite a bit of thread on that. We're not all, all the way down there yet, so we'll do a little bit more. I'm not going to go much further though, to be honest with you. Son of a gun. leave that for now like that I'm not going to go much further than that and the reason being is this is a fine line there's a fine line when that's too far okay so that's what I have to do on on both ends I don't think you painstakingly have to watch me do that to drill that to come up through there. That's the drill bit I'm using. So it's like a cone. Um, what I am going to do though, is I'm going to take this back off. So you know what I have to do there. I might have to drill that up a little bit, a little bit further to put that in. I have to do the exact same thing to the other one. But what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt the rack on for the very first time. Uh, what I have, when I painted the frame, um, I bring these in with me. They're earplugs. And when I painted the frame, I took earplugs. You can see over here, baby, you want to see? I took earplugs and shoved them in all the holes that have threads. And that way there, I'm not spending hours of my time. I should have did it when I primed too, obviously. I'm not spending hours of my time getting a tap and die set and going through each hole to pull out the paint. Hmm. See that? It's pretty cool. So I don't even remember how the, this rack goes on. I'm going to peel the tape off. I don't have to peel the tape off. I can peel it off after I put it on there. But on this car, the rack and pinion goes through the motor mount. This is the motor mount. And uh, this is a piece of exhaust pipe that I welded inside the motor mount. And uh, that's where it goes through. So you, you can realize if you had to do something to the rack and pinion, you probably would have to pull the motor out, pull the body off, <laughs> pull the motor out to get out the rack and pinion. So it's very, that's why I, I would say that the cars or the Bugatti itself is so, um, so expensive because of the amount of work you have to do uh, to make it work. And basically that's what I'm doing, making it work. I have, these are muffler clamps. They worked perfect to hold in the rack. They worked perfect. So I'm going to use them. I can't remember which way that goes on, to be honest with you. Alrighty, here we go. I got the nuts bolted there. 
Now, obviously, I know how it goes on because the steering goes in behind. Now, I got fluid dumping out it already. Don't like that. But I'll tell you what it does do. It makes things shiny. Tra power steering fluid. Got a rag right here. I want to take that off. See, I'm starting out already wrong. Leaking fluid everywhere. Now, this goes on like so. So that's how it goes on. I'm pull, take this, bring this rag over with me. And this is what goes on in this sort of stuff. This goes underneath the chassis. Now I have to recall. to see whether I can get that in there. Uh -huh. How's that go? Alright. Hey, look at that now, would you? I don't like that already. Does that go up inside there? Does that go inside like that? Or See, that's going to hit that bolt, isn't it? Huh? All right, let's get one side on. All right, there's the first thing that I have an issue with. That my set nut, I get it that. It's probably going to hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it on. Let's try it again. How's that? Hey. Probably should have two people doing this, but I'm gonna stick my knee underneath there. Wow. <laughs> not sure if I get it right on this side or not. I'm going to have to do something with that set screw already. I don't think I can have it. I don't think I can have the set screw. Jeez. Ah, now let's take this back off. I'm going to take that off and uh, I'm going to put a pin in it. We're going to cut the set screw off and leave the set screw in it without the lock. I'm going to have to. By looks things in it, sweetheart, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's take that off. Got to do what I got to do. If you don't know the size of it, just grab three or four, <laughs> basically. So this is the first time we've tried to put it on with, without 
with yeah let's do the boxed in try that I'm tightening it no it's tightening and loosening it sure if I can even get the set screw out because I remember we um, made that fit and then we JB welded it we drilled a hole in that and then I will see where to put them at yeah we will see Might be a little while before I can find the Allen key even to take that out. Here we go. So what we'll do is we'll try it without it because we can always put it in. Alrighty. We drilled that. How far does that go in there? I gotta find out how far it goes in. I might cut it off. All right, so what happens is, I think I drilled, it's been a bit, I think I drilled the uh, the shaft that went in there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. And this will not turn on that anyways because we turned it into a double D shaft. So what it means is it's got two flat sides on it. Um, and, and I think what happened is, yeah, we had two flat sides, took a grinder and shade both sides off. So it will not turn anyways. Um, the set screws for it does not come off. It's not gonna come off anyways because I think I shoved JB Weld in there. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna cut this set screw in half uh, put a little edge on it, and I'm going to put the set screw back in without the nut. I'm going to have to because the nut's going to hit on the motor mount. And any place you see like that there will have to be touched up with black paint. We'll touch it up after we get going. And basically we'll do that with a Q-tip, no doubt in my mind. Now, to cut that off. This is the stuff I'm gonna to have to go through to do Jolene's car. This is not my favorite stuff to do, but it's what's gotta be done to get it done. I'm not sure if I had it on there exactly. I'm actually, what I'm gonna do before I cut this, before I cut this, I'm gonna try it back on again without the bowl. I think that'd be the safest thing for me to do. Don't you, sweetheart? I think it'd be the safest thing for me to do. This is the first time I've put the rack and pinion on with the steering arm going through. It doesn't seem like it wants to hit like it was it's supposed to. Just kind of wondering. Yeah, that's on the outside of that. Yeah, that'd be great if you could hold that. Yeah, one second. I wonder to come out. Come out this your way some. There we go. That fits right in there. Now I can turn that set screw in there when it comes to the top. That's fine. You've got that? Mm -hmm. I'm just actually going to put my knee underneath it.
There's another one here. And there could be paint holding me up too for making it do what I need it to do. That went in nice. Push it off the jack. That's what's going on. That's gonna be lifted up some. Good. Awesome. There might be enough room. So you can imagine um, if you were building a car for a big show and you were, you know, trying to do the best job you could. That little scratch on that motor mount um, wouldn't be something that you'd want. <laughs> Not at all. And that's why I guess you would build it. There we go, that's going good. <laughs> Come on out. off a little bit. Hey, she's a tight fit. Baby doll. Take this one out. Come on out, girl. Come on out, man. Ah. Gonna loosen this one up so I can put the other one in. ratchet. Just hope that stays in place. I want that up higher, obviously. Ah, that's where it's supposed to be. It's screwing in now. Is it? Yeah, it was. Alright, I'm just going to leave that there. It's not going to fall, I don't think. And I might be able to get the set screw. I'll get the set screw back in it. Once I turn it and I'll get it on the top side and then I'll get it going around, then I'll know what I have to do. Quite something else, eh? Let's see what happens. It's not a half inch, I don't think. Get a wrench. Got me sweating already. short little wrench on it so you know that you wouldn't be we're in now now I want to tighten the top up here I want to put a little gap into here you can see that I've got enough gap for that to turn 
in my steering. Wow, that's quite something, eh? <laughs> well, it is what it is. It's what had to be done um, to make it work. And uh, I'm gonna hold this up the best I can and tighten that up. finger gap in there, a little finger gap in there. Wow. Staying in place it is. Awesome. Also, I've put these, there's a, there's a muffler clamp going down in here, their eighth plate. There's two little tabs. There's a little tab on, you can see it on this side. There's a little, it fits perfect. There's a little tab on this side. You can see a little tab there where my finger is. Mm -hmm. And there's a little tab on the other side of the muffler clamp that will not allow that to go back and forth. Also, I have the bracket so it's on the outside of the rack. There's no way possible that the rack can go back and forth. No way possible. So I'm very happy with the hookup. There's no way possible that it can take off. almost could double nut it back here on this side. I think that we're going to be fine. See how close we are to the brackets? Like we're very close to everything to make that work. Uh, I'm going to wind this in a little bit further. Make sure we get full. And I'm just doing it with a short handed wrench. So we should be fine with the amount of torque I'm putting on it. We've got enough room in there and there. And then the steering will come up through there. That's going to be perfect. Absolutely perfect. When I turn this back up, we get, I might be able to get that nut back on there now that I look at it. Now I've got the rack turned up this way. I think I'll have enough room. And if not, I will just put the set screw in. I'll just knock the, put a thinner uh, lock washer on it maybe. I'll have to cut it down so it goes in a little bit further. So then we'll have our rack on. Really don't want to touch anything, but the rack's on. Not exactly as tight as I'm going to want it on there. And then we'll have our tie rod in. We'll put some never sees on that. We have our jam nut. How far away on that side? Yeah, we have a jam nut. Hoping we're getting the steering radius that we need. So basically you're gonna see what I'm gonna go through. I also had to figure out whether it was going to hit here when the air ride went all the way down. It does not because we're out past a point of, of motions right here. So we're out past the chassis. All the motion is going to be in here. Um, the shock. When this is turned, it's going to pull it in. So we're going to miss the shock when we go down. So we're, that, that's going to, that had to be, uh, that had to be looked at. So when I pull this in, the shock is not going to hit that actually goes together so it's not going to hit it at all. Um, when this moves, this is going to move the same with it. 
Um, basically, that's what I had to figure out. So I've got a hole to drill on that side. I've got to make sure that the rack is tightened up exactly the tightness I want it. I'm going to play with the set screw so I can put the set screw back in. If I do not put the lock washer back on the set screw, I will make sure that I just put the set screw in and put something on it so it can't back off. You know, anything to make it so it don't back off. Um, it's a double D shaft. It's not going to turn on that anyways. But this is the fun I'm going to have putting this ride together. Is basically um, getting it. Yeah. There you go. So basically that's what I'm doing. Putting the rack on, drilling the tie rod ends, making them fit. The steering's going to work. Going to put a little bit of touch-up paint right underneath that. You'd never see it unless you're underneath the car. But um, we'll put a little touch-up paint on that where I scratched it. And the steering joint's going to go right through there. It's going to move perfect right through that hole for that motor mount. Awesome. Um, got the motor mount. Cool. Well, you see what I'm going to stick with. I'm going to, I'm going to finish this, I think. Uh, finish getting that, drilling the hole on that side. Figure out the, the, the set nut for the pivot point there, the universal joint. Never seize the ends and put the tie rods back on. And nut the tie rod ends down. We're back on the Bugatti people. And it's going to take me a little bits of stuff like that to get this rocking and rolling. Um, yeah. Also, when we put the rate, like the, the, everything is so close that everything has to be done. <laughs> everything has to be done and working when the body goes on. When the body goes on, it's over. Uh, there's, no, there's no getting at it. Um, if you want to put it on the hoist and try to work at it from the underneath, I, I don't imagine that it would be fun trying to put it, get a line off from the underneath, but we'll see what happens. I also have a funny thing. To, you'll see. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming back and watching the beginning of the Bugatti again. Um, yeah, to jump in and do something like that on camera or on film. Um, it's painstaking probably to watch, but um, that's the stuff that's got to be done to this car. That's what the finishing touches are, uh, that right there. And uh, you're going to watch me finish this car, or do most of the finish work to it. Um, we got some body work to do to it left yet. We got some welding to do to it yet. We got some you know, to straightening out to do yet. We got the brake system to get it done yet. We got to put in the, uh, the dash and the steering yet. Uh, we got to get the seats upholstered. A lot of work to do, but I want to have it for the building that we're getting built. So I'm going to finish it. Um, basically, this is what we've been waiting for. I can't finish it and then not have anywhere to put it. That's not going to happen. Also, if you've been watching, um, we had a, <clears throat> a fountain that I sandblasted and fixed. Well, that fountain, I have a plan, is going with that car. That fountain is going to be there with the big, I don't know, the little angel or whatever on the top with the water coming out of it. Um, it reminds me of something that would be in front of that car in the driveway back in the day. And when we display it, there's going to be a fountain there with Jolene's Bugatti right beside it. And uh, that's my dream. And uh, you know how I work with my dreams. Just keep working at it, and one day it comes true. Like I tell all the kids, you must have a dream, because if you do not have a dream, um, it cannot come true. And, <laughs> like, I, like I always tell them too, it's free. There, there doesn't cost you a damn thing to dream. So as I'm building this car, I'm going to be dreaming about putting the fountain, getting it ready, and putting the car beside the fountain to make it look like someone that had millions and millions of dollars um, owned this car, and uh, it's been sitting there waiting for them to go to town. Have a great one, everybody.